and whenever you're ready. Hello, my name is Charles Tucker, pastor of Freedom Church of Las Cruces. Been in the ministry for about 40 years. I've done a lot of different things through my life before that. I'm 70 years old, soon be 71. Just celebrated my 50th wedding anniversary and uh, call into the ministry. Stop. We're going to start over because you got more of yourself. At the beginning, you were monotone. Okay? Oh. So after about 20 seconds, then you became yourself. Okay. Okay. So. Hello. My name is Charles Tucker. I'm pastor of Freedom Church, Las Cruces, New Mexico. We started the church about five and a half years ago. My wife and I, a few friends. We now have a wonderful church congregation, it's small, but nevertheless, probably the friendliest church I have ever pastored. Been in the ministry for about 40 years. Called into the ministry when I was in first grade in a dynamic way by listening to a preacher on the radio by the name of C.A. Moore. And uh, we just have enjoyed being here and we're starting this vlog so that uh, I can get out some of the issues that I think need to be discussed. And today I'm going to be talking about the big lie and the big truth because there's a lot of big lies going on out there in the world today. Don't get into what you're going to do. This is just an introduction. Okay. Okay. Go back to uh, why you're doing this and then I can mess it in there. Okay. No, oh, okay. As we start this vlog, we simply want to get the church out there in the public's eye. And we just are looking forward to praying for you. And even though we'll probably never meet this side of heaven, it is my prayer right now that Jesus Christ will bless you, bless your family, and bless your life. If you do not know Him as your Lord and Savior, it is my prayer that through this fall that you will come to know Him as your Lord and as your Savior. Because that's the only place of safety in this world. Because we are the only ones that are going to go to heaven. Everybody else, unfortunately, goes to hell for the rejection of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Okay, that was good. I'll edit it and mash it together okay. and all that stuff. Do you want to look at it before I post it? or just No. Okay. I don't care. Okay, now, uh, now that you're starting your blog, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, hi, I'm Pastor Tucker at the Lost Cruises Freedom Church. Uh, today we're going to talk about da 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 da. Okay. Uh, I'll back it up with verse and discuss it. Comment below if you need to say anything or disagree or whatever. I'll try to reply to you. Um, I put up an email. Uh, what did I call it? I can't remember the email. I, what is this called? Come on. Podcast at lcfreedom.org. Okay, so if you want to mention that too as well or something like that. And then I'll get you that information. But most people will just comment on the video. Okay. Okay? So I probably mentioned the podcast so yeah. <laughs> All those technical stuff I have to do with the moral mm -hmm. preaching <laughs> teaching I can That's do. fine too. I can also put graphics up for that too as well. Okay. At the end of it. So I can also put, you know, our website and address and all that at the end of it as well. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Hello, today is our first broadcast and I am going to be talking about the big lie and the real truth because there's a lot of big lies going on out there in the world today. If you heard on the news about the big boat fire in California, I believe it was Diane Feinstein said this should not have happened, we have too many regulations. I want you to know that that's a big lie. Laws will never make you safe, the only place of safety is in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he promised in Matthew 16, 16, that not even the gates of hell will prevail against you. And so whether you live or whether you die, as a child of God, you will spend eternity in a place called heaven. That is our eternal reward. But anyhow, let us start off by reading in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 16, and find out what the destination of liars really is. 
Blessed are they who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murmurers, and idolaters, and whosoever, now get this, loves and makes a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you. And to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And so the Bible makes it really clear that they're liars, especially of the big lie. And the biggest lie that's perpetrated today is in religion. Because we hear the religious speakers, some of them in large churches, some of them in small churches. But only Jesus Christ can save your soul. Only Jesus Christ can take you to that tree of life. The Bible says we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. And everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you can read the verses. We'll put them up on the thing for you. But anyhow, I want to get into this big lie thing. We hear the big lie today that with all these shootings that are going on, that the NRA is protecting people that want to go out and kill people. I propose to you the NRA is wanting to protect your constitutional rights. The big lie, and the one that is promoting the murder of countless thousands of Americans, is a place called Planned Parenthood. And all the people that seem to be against the NRA are very much in favor of Planned Parenthood. When we hear about these terrible shootings, we hear about 10, 15, or 20, or even 30. It's always terrible. We agree with that. But what about the silent scream of the unborn baby that is murdered in its mother's womb? What about the baby that's head is pulled out of its mother's womb and the doctor sticks a pair of forceps in its brain and sucks the brain out and then removes the baby and throws it in a garbage can? Now, if we're going to protest about something, and if we really care about our children, it's not gun control we need. It's to get rid of these ridiculous laws and what we call rights from the pits of hell. That's the big lie. We'll talk about some more big lies later on. But a lot of the other one I want to talk about to you right now is the lie that we're all God's children. I'm going to turn over my Bible right now to John the 8th chapter and verse number 44 because the Bible clearly says we are not all God's children. The only people that can be God's children are people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Jesus speaking here says, You are of your father. Notice who their father is? The devil. And the lust of your father you will do. If he's a liar and a thief, he's come to kill and destroy. One of the lusts of the devil would be, we can't have too many abortions. And that would be over 60 million abortions if my number is roughly correct right now. But we kill. Think about that. 60 million babies have been killed. And you know, it always comes back, people always send me a question or ask me a question, well, what about in the case of incest or rape? Well, the baby did not do anything wrong. My answer to that is, kill the rapist if you got to kill somebody. Kill the one that did the incest if you got to kill somebody. They're the ones that are guilty, not an unborn little baby that's fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. That was so precious that God said before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. God has a plan for these children. So abortion is thwarting God's plan. And people that are doing that are not children of God. Well, let me finish the verse anyhow. You are your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer. It is already against the law to commit murder in the United States of America. It has not worked. So he said some people, their father is the devil. But I'm not just wanting to read one verse. I'm going to go over 1 John, the third chapter. And I want to read verses 8 through 10. Because the Lord has something interesting to say here. He who commits sin is of the devil. Yes, there is a devil, people. 
And He wants nothing more than to destroy your life, your dreams, and those of the ones that you care about. He who commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of, pay attention, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he who loves not his brother. If you do not love those little unborn babies enough to say no to abortion, then you are a child of the devil. And so when Nancy Pelosi says that MS-13 are children of God, Nancy Pelosi is a liar. And the truth is not in her. And you say, well, Pastor, there are a lot of these people who say that they're Christians. No, they are religious people. Religion is one of the most damnable, disappointing, discouraging, life-ruining things that the devil ever brought into this world. Christianity says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to say it again. That means if I die right now before this vlog is over, I'll be in heaven. My spirit and soul will be in heaven. My body might be laying here on the floor, but I'm not going to be looking back. Because Paul said, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, I look forward to every day, every day, with a sense of excitement. This could be the day that I meet Jesus Christ face to face. He's already in my heart because I've confessed Him with my mouth as my Lord. I've confessed my sins and asked Him to forgive me of my sins. And we'll read those verses in just a little bit. But the big problem, I believe, that we find in the world today is found, I, I think one of the answers is found in Romans 1.2. And as we continue this, I'm going to spend some time next week in Romans the first chapter. But in Romans the first chapter, verse number 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now doesn't that sound like a lot of our politicians today? Doesn't that sound like a lot of our movie stars and our singers today? That are saying if we take guns away, everybody will be safe. Honey, if we take all the guns in the world away, they'll still be murdering babies on a wholesale rate. Selling the body parts. Worse than anything the Nazis ever done, that Islam ever done, the communists ever done, the socialism ever done. The murder of an innocent little baby is supposed to be a right and a privilege protected under the Constitution, that is a big lie from people that profess themselves to be wise. But the Bible said they become fools. And if you study this here, when it says become fools, that means they are without God. They're not the children of God. But we'll talk about that next week a little bit. Anyhow, I want to talk to you about the big truth. When we decided to start Freedom Church, I looked around and I have been with the Assemblies of God for all my life and we were independent when we started the church and I've been with the Church of God a little bit. I, I love both organizations. They have some terrible churches and they have some great churches. They have some terrible pastors and they have some great pastors, just like everything else in this world. And so, if you ever hear me mention the Assemblies of God or the Church of God in one of these, it'll never be in a negative way or a put down way. I respect all my brothers and sisters. But they're only my brothers and sisters if they have accepted Jesus Christ and they are obeying His commandments as John wrote so long ago. Because Jesus said, if you love me, I'll know it because you'll obey me. So, we started the church with the idea in Romans 8, I mean in John 8, 31-32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. This Bible that I'm reading from right here is the inerrant word of God. It is the final authority on everything. The final authority on everything. 
And so when we read this, this is God speaking to you and me. People say, God never speaks to me. Yes, He does. Just pick up your Bible and read it. And I recommend the King James Version. And I won't get into versions tonight, but I recommend the King James Version. And it's the only one that I recommend. Okay, let's read it now. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We want people to be free here. Our church in Las Cruces, New Mexico. We want to be free to dream and to love and to laugh. We want to be free to have hope and joy every day. The Bible speaks of joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Bible speaks of Jesus being our counselor, our wonderful God, our mighty God, our everlasting Father. You're never alone when you know Jesus Christ because this body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. But I need to continue to read. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How? Reading and obeying the Word of God. Let's jump down just a little bit further to verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You notice that big word with I-F? If the Son shall make you free. I'm going to tell you in a moment. And we'll read the verses of how for the Son of God to set you free. But I want you to know tonight that there's nothing that will thrill heaven more than you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Actually, we'll read it someday. Jesus will turn to the Father and call your name out when you do and say, you've come home. Yeah, you have a home in heaven. You have a mansion in heaven. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you might be also. God looks forward to having you with him in heaven. And remember, everything down here is only temporary. Everything up there is for eternity. Now I want to talk about heaven to you one of these days, but we're not going to be able to do that today. But I want to take you over to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, and the 17th verse, because it's another verse about the freedom that is found only in Jesus Christ. And so as I, as I turn over there, and this was the third verse that we used to start the church. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because of Jesus Christ dwelling in our heart, be in our counselor, be in our comforter, the Holy Spirit be in our guide, leading us into all truth. Because God is doing that in our life. I'm at liberty to pursue my dreams. I'm at liberty to love my wife unconditionally for over 50 years now. I'm in a position where I love my daughter and my son-in-law, my two grandchildren. <coughs> and my two grandchildren that they're adopting right now. I'm so proud of them. I'd like to show you a picture of them sometime. But anyhow, so it says that we would be free because Jesus set us free. We would be at liberty because the Spirit of the Lord would be with us. So I want to tell you why I think this is so important and it's been passed over by so many of the Pentecostal churches. And you say, oh, he's again speaking in tongues, the gift of the Spirit. No, I am not. I have been in the Assemblies of God, a Pentecostal denomination, all my life. There was a time when I was in junior high school in eighth grade that God baptized me in the Holy Ghost, me and the pastor's son, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now, I know that might have turned some of you off, but it really excites me because it's been a wonderful experience all my life. So I'm not again the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We believe in divine healing. We pray for people every day. And God answers prayer, but He always answers it the way God wants to answer it. Because God's not a vending machine. We can't tell Him what to do and get the response we want. That's another topic we'll talk about one of these days. So the Bible here says in 1 John, the 16th chapter, Paul speaking in the 15th verse says, So as much as in me, 
I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Now, did you notice that? It said, that's the power of God. When the baptism of the Holy Spirit was given to the New Testament church, whether you believe it all ended back then or whether you believe it's still for today, it was for one reason. It was to go out and win people and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. It's not the blab it and grab it. It's not if you put in $10, God's going to give you back 20 It's none of these lies that the shysters are trying to tell you. He's talking about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And without the shedding of His blood, there can be no forgiveness, no remission of sins. He paid the redemption price. And so as it says here, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just live by faith. And when you're depending on the government and their big lies, when you're depending on the politicians and their big lies, when you're depending on religion and their big lies, if you depend on socialism and its big lie, if you depend on communism and its big lie, you are always going to be disappointed. But I will tell you what, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will wonder why you waited so long because it will be the greatest miracle. Probably the only miracle you will take to heaven with you. Salvation through the blood of Jesus. That's the message the church is to be preaching today. That's the message you and I are supposed to take to a lost, dying world that's being so deceived today by religion. A, something I started saying years ago, and I know it aggravates some people, but let me finish the statement before you shoot your computer or something. The Pope can't help you. The priest can't help you. The rabbi can't help you. The cleric can't help you. This pastor cannot help you. Only Jesus Christ can save your soul. Only Jesus Christ can make you whole. Only Jesus can forgive your sins. And there's only one way to do it, and it's His way. I want to turn over now to Romans, the 10th chapter. I'm going to read it to you because a lot of times it gets quoted and we don't read the whole thing or we don't quote the whole thing because I quoted a little bit of it a few times, but maybe you want to sit down and just think about this because this is God writing it to you through the Apostle Paul. The Bible says in Romans, the 10th chapter, in the 9th verse, that if you shall confess with your mouth, you confess that Jesus is Lord, that He is King of Kings. If you confess with your mouth and shall believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So I'm believing in here. And I know it's real, because there's an old song we used to sing. I know it's real, for I can feel it in my soul. But anyhow, let's continue to read. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, lest we get confused with a lot of big speaking, I'm going to read a couple more verses. All he's really saying is say, Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I know that you have raised from the dead and you are the King of kings and the Lord of life, lords. And you want, I want you to be king of my life. So just a simple prayer like that. Oh, I would give you a prayer to say, but God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear what's in your heart, what's on your mind. And so it goes on to say, for the scripture says, whosoever believes on him, that means, Everybody can get saved. I mean, even the abortionists can get saved. And I feel so sorry for those that have had the abortions. We don't criticize them here at the church. We don't look down at them because we know that they live with nightmares, they live with guilt. Jesus is the one that can heal that broken heart. Jesus is the only one that can heal that broken heart and drive away those bad dreams, those nightmares. Jesus is the only one that can answer, what if? Jesus Christ. Won't you accept Him as your Savior today and let Him heal that broken heart? 
and set you at liberty from all these bruises of getting beat up in life. But let me continue to read. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whoever you are, no matter what you've done, God wrote that specifically for you. He wrote that that you could become one day a child of God. It doesn't matter if you're 10 years old or 100 years old. God put no age requirement on it. You don't have to write a church check. You don't have to run out to a church or to a pastor. All you need to do is call upon the Lord and you will be saved. Then I suggest you get in your Bible and, no, I don't know, why don't you start reading the Gospel of John? Or maybe first in first John. Either one of those two is a good place to start when you first start reading the Bible. Do many people want to go to Revelations and they have a bunch of questions? And what you need to learn is the love of God that is revealed in the book of John. And so in closing right now, I pray for you. I pray that God would touch you by his spirit. I pray his word would speak to you because I know he wants to. And I pray that right now you come to know him. Is your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Let me say thank you for giving me this time to talk to you about the big lie and the real truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you.